The Psalms are prayers and hymns of the Bible par excellence. Uttered in praise, joy, sorrow, and despair, spoken or sung in private and in public. By lay people, kings, poets, and priests, coming from both the righteous and repentant sinners, the Psalms have served as the prayer book and the hymn book. To generations of believers, for every man on every occasion can find in its Psalms. Good morning. Welcome to Whispering Hope Daily Sabbath School Lesson Study. We are in the 11th week and we are going into Sunday's lesson today. We have our illustrious brethren from Elders from Jamaica here on this morning. I'm, I'm a strange person on the set this morning. I'm a strange person on the set this morning, but I'm fitting in for my daughter. She's having a birthday this week. I still call her princess, but she probably is too big to be a princess now. Mm -hmm. But we're happy to have you, Elder Curtis and Elder Goodlet, on the set this morning as we look at our lesson, Longing for God in Zion. Longing for God in Zion. And today's specific topic that we'll be looking at is a day in your courts is better than a thousand. And so we're going to look at that before we go into our prayer. We're going to ask Elder Mark Curtis, put the lesson topic for the week in context and also break down for us today's lesson study topic. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Elder Joseph. I am so elated and happy that we are on this morning to just present the word of God for the people of God. And we know we have um, hundreds, even thousands who are joining. And we want to put this lesson into context for them because longing for God in Zion. Well, we know that God, he, he loves to be with his people. And those who love God loves to be in the presence of God. And we understand that this songs of Zion is about the songs of the God who reigns in Zion. And we know also that this, this week's study, this week's study is a powerful study because every one of us recognize where God is and who God is. He is creator of all. And also we recognize that this God that we serve who reigns in Zion, the people of God back there in Jerusalem, they recognize that Jerusalem was the place where God is worshipped. Even Daniel, Daniel turned his face to Jerusalem and he prayed because he recognized that his prayers can be answered by the God who reigns in Zion. And so this week, as we go into this lesson, longing for God in Zion, there is a longing for God's people, a longing to be with God, a longing to be in the presence of God, and not just here on earth, but we long to be with him in eternity, in the heaven made new, as Revelation chapter 21 tells us, that the day is coming when all of us will see his face and his name shall be in our foreheads and we will reign with him in Zion. We praise God for the hope that we have to be with God. Amen. Amen. The subtopic, a day in your courts is better than a thousand. We'll look at longing for Zion. Let us start here. What we look at is that this psalm is said to be written when David was basically in exile. And so he was away from Jerusalem. And what happened is that he, he wrote this psalm as an expression of his love and his devotion for being in God's house. Because he saw God's house as a place where he and God can spend some intimate time and so being away from it he longed to be in the presence of god's house he longed to to see the blessedness that comes from dwelling with god in his house and therefore he also it also draws his mind back to when pilgrims used to to come and the joy that they felt as they would walk and come near and near to Jerusalem. And so he had this longing in his heart because no, he was deprived of that worship. He was deprived of worshiping in the house of God. And, and many here this morning can identify with that elder. Can you imagine if you, elder, was prohibited from going to God's house to meet with God's people who share a common 
interest who share a common praise for a common God. I don't know. It would be a heart-rending thing. And so this deep longing he had for the fellowship and for corporate worship was expressed in this longing to be in Zion. And Zion represents Jerusalem. And Jerusalem represents the city of God. Absolutely, absolutely. So Elder Curtis, we now have the prayer as you invite God's presence in our midst before we go deep into the word of God. Let us pray. Dear God and Heavenly Father, we are always mindful that when we come into your presence to lift up your name, to lift up the name of Jesus who brings us closer and still closer to you, or prayers, we desire them to be answered, Lord, and for your favor to be on up, upon us. Lord, we ask that you will give us your Holy Spirit. Move in this whispering hope platform and for everyone who joins us and open our hearts, Lord, to have that longing, that desire to be closer to you, even to the point, Lord, where we are lost and Jesus is magnified and glorified. Bless your name, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. We now have our memory text by Elder Goodley. Comes to us from Psalm 84 and verse 2 and it reads, My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry for the living God. Amen. Elder Goodlet, what is your insight into our memory text for this week? I kind of like the topic in itself, longing for God in Zion. But everything we're trying to put in context so those who are studying with us will really understand what the lesson is about this week. So what is your understanding of this week's memory text? All right, so when we look at this week's memory text, as we see, David here is writing. And basically, it is a prayer that he is expressing himself. And you, when, when you read it, you can feel the earnestness of what he is saying and how he is fervent about it. When he says, my soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. And this earnestness should characterize all our prayers when we are pouring out our souls to God. It is his soul is crying out, but it's not crying out in vain. It's a crying out for a joy that comes from being in the presence of the living God. Because when you look at it, you know, David here is segregating the God of heaven, the living God, the creator from the idols which are dead and only alive in the minds of the men who create them. And so David wants us to understand that if there is a host that we need to be in, if there's a place that we need to be in, if there's a court that we must be settled in, it must be the courts where the living God reigns supreme. Absolutely, absolutely. Elder Curtis, I'm sure you have something to add on when we text this morning. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because, you know, it is interesting to note that the, the, the word Zion is mentioned over about 38 times and stands out as the dwelling place of God. Now, if some if there's a place that is the dwelling place of God, when we when we consider, all things considered, now when God was moving with the children of Israel, the cloud there that protected them and the, the, the pillar of fire there that protected them. And when the Lord moved, when the cloud moved, the people moved. And when, when they established that, that, that tent sanctuary and God established the sacrificial system and the presence of God, wherever God is, is people desire to be there because the presence of God means that the protection of God is there. The presence of God means that the power of God is there. Deliverance is there. Forgiveness is there. So all things considered, when, when we consider this place, Zion, yes, that David conquered the um, Jerusalem and established the temple there and Solomon built the temple there and Zion is mentioned. We understand that if we want to meet God, let us therefore, according as we see in our, our memory text, if we want to meet who? We want to meet God, we must go to Zion. And so the psalmist is longing. As a matter of fact, he's, he doesn't even use, only use the word longing to suggest a strong desire, but he uses faith. In other words, his whole being is wearying because he wants to be where God is. 
And we too need to have that longing. We too need to be so enraptured in the desire to be where God is. Because where God is, we can experience the blessings of God. We can grant him and give him the praise that is due to him. Because there is redeeming love in the God we serve. And I say amen to that. And I say amen to that also. El, el, oh, you're back in focus now. You were out of focus a bit as you were talking. Okay, so we're going to read uh, Elder Curtis. We're going into our list with our first question now that we have completed all our preliminaries. And we're going to read Psalm 84, verses 1 to 4. And then we'll come back to our question. So, Elder Curtis, if you can read that for us. Psalm 84, verses 1 to 4. Psalm 84, verses 1 through 4. And it, and it reads thus. A psalm for the sons of Korah. How amiably are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Amen. So the question is this morning, why does the psalmist long to dwell in the sanctuary? Amen. Why does the psalmist long to dwell in the sanctuary? Well, the psalmist longs to dwell in the, the, the sanctuary because he longs to be in the presence of God. As the, According to this psalm, Psalm 84, verse 1 through 4, we see that because God is near and he is forever near to those who desire him. That is his abode. And so the psalmist wants to be wherever God is. Also, the psalmist behold, he wants to behold the beauty of the Lord, according to Psalm 27 and verse 4. He wants to be in the living presence of God. And all of us are to have that same desire of being where God is because where God is, there is favor. And when God favors his people, God blesses his people. And we are not just talking about material blessing. We are blessed to be in the very presence of him who transforms us to be like himself. So we are restored to that place where God and us can have communion one-to-one, -one, face to face. We can be experience that experience now in anticipation for the life to come. There was a time when even the vilest offender wanted to be in church. They know they were not living up. Even the guy who is a drunkard by the street, and he felt that something special would happen to him when he went to church. And it seems to me that that is the way the saints back in Jerusalem thought about the sanctuary. So as you look at this, why does the psalmist long to be in the sanctuary? I don't know if you could say something about our desire to be in the sanctuary today or not to be in the sanctuary. <laughs> All right, Elder. And that is where I was going to take it from. That is where I was going to take it from. Deep in each individual, God has placed a insatiable desire for worship that cannot be settled a man will drink and all of that but he cannot feel satisfied with it it doesn't give him the, the peace and the joy that he can he is fine and therefore just like the psalmist there is a homesickness to be at a place but many persons don't know where that place is but then but deep inside when they see persons who go to church who go to the sanctuary and they, they are enjoying the worship of the sanctuary there's a desire to experience that joy and therefore the vilest offender even though he may not yet truly believes he wants to go and taste and see if what their experience is real. And so these individuals will go out there and they will trod there. But guess what I also was looking at, Ella? When you look at verse 4, it says, Blessed are they that dwell in the house of the Lord. There is an envy of people out there for persons who spend time with God in his sanctuary. And so that longing is what David also had because he envied the persons who devoted their entire life to the service of God. And these persons are ministering in the sanctuary. 
day after day after day while some person just come and go. He wanted to spend time there. And you know what, I, what came across my mind as I was going through it? This is a typology of the day when we will truly dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever and ever. And being in there, just like all the sparrows, who make the sanctuary their home and find peace and joy in their undisturbed. We too long for that day when we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever secure and undisturbed from all that is happening around us. What a glorious day that we be when we're in the dwelling place of the Lord, our creator, the sustainer, and the giver of all good gifts. I look forward to that day. It must be a wonderful time. If I get so excited about the music that is being played in this world, I what about when about we go where perfect beans are and oh. celebrating on the harp and the, all of those instruments yeah, that will be yeah, available? Man. You know, as I was reflecting, even as David was speaking, I was speaking, you know, it, the songwriter says, In his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand. And that's that's the beauty of it because all who, in, irrespective of who a person is or where they may, may have been, when they come into the presence of the Lord, there is a transformation. And that is just what I wanted to add to it because there is fullness of joy. There are pleasures forevermore because the God who we serve is, a, is just out of this world, God. Amen. Amen. Uh, I had to let out the secret that not <laughs> only can you divide the word, but you are an excellent singer. Well, the people don't know this morning. Well, <laughs> so let us go, Elder Goodlet. <laughs> let's go. Psalm 84, verses 5 through to 12, reading from the King James Version. And it reads thus Blessed is a man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them who pass it through the valley of Baca, make it a well. The rain also. Fill at the pools. They go down from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Behold, O God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our shield, the, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them who that walk uprightly. The Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusted in thee. Amen. So, Elder Goodly, who else can be blessed by the sanctuary? Who can be blessed by the sanctuary? As we have said just now, let us take it from the text first, and then we will put the, the, the current application to it. So when we look at it, those who serve in the sanctuary are blessed by it. Those who minister in the sanctuary, they are blessed by it. Then you know those now that David is talking about who make that pilgrimage year after year, going up to Jerusalem at those great feasts. It was a joyous occasion. Children were going up long for the day when they reached the age that they can go to Jerusalem to, to see the sanctuary, to be in the presence of God. I remember in old time days, in my little district, in the country there we used to have crusades and those crusades used to be held like seven miles away from where we live so in order to go and come back we're looking at about 14 miles and we used to walk as children with our parents and listen to me there was not a dull face because we were going to where the people of God was. We were going to be in the presence of God, hearing the word of God. And I would listen to the older folks talk of God's goodness as they walked that seven miles. And by the time you quint, it was as if it was nothing. And so the persons who made this pilgrim up to Jerusalem, as they near the city and they see the little landmarks telling them that they were near, instead of getting weary from the long walk, their hearts would be buoyed up and they would have pep in their step and they would go there because now they are going to be in the presence of the Lord and so with us today when we are going to worship in the house of the Lord we must 
understand that we are going in the presence of God. And this should buoy us up. Because listen, the nearer we get to go to the heavenly Jerusalem, I have to put in this. And we see the sign showing that we are nearing home. I can't sing like Mark, but we are nearing home. See the splendors gleaming from the dunes afar, brethren and friends. When we see that, we should be buoyed up and our faith should go firm and our trust in God should hold. And we must understand that, listen, a day in the Lord's courts is going to be better than a thousand in the courts of wicked. And so the man that does right is supposed to be blessed by the sanctuary. And we must hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering because in the presence of God, there is always fullness of joy. I think I'll wrap it there because I'll continue to talk for the rest of the morning. Elder, Elder Mark, it seems like I had to get a chain to tie down Elder Goodlit. He was coming yeah, off the set. <laughs> so Elder Mark, uh, before I ask you your question, did you is there something you want to add to this yes. particular yes. question? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Because, you know, there are a number of persons we recognize that uh, can be there in the temple, in where God is. And it tells us that, you know, according to Psalm 84, verses 1 to through, as, as well as verse 10, those who ardently long for it yes if you long for it you can be there and jesus is coming very soon and all of god's children those who are truly desirous of being with jesus will make the preparation necessary to be with him and yes we can be with him here and we can be with him there and also according to psalm 84 and verse 3 the small can be there the great can be there the lofty can be there. Even the humble can be there in the presence of the Lord. Yes, and we can be there because God accommodates everyone. None is exempted. And will we be happy there? Who will be happy there? Guess who will be happy there? According to verse 4, those who walk in the work of God. Yes, you walk. You don't, As David tells us, those who are doing the work there, the singers can be there. The, those who kept, keep the gate, the sons of Korah, the, they, they were the gatekeepers always, as well as the singers. And we see that the, David would get those persons to be a part of the, the choir. And I want to say to somebody out there who sings and you're a part of the choir and you're getting discouraged, hold on, stay your course. Continue doing the work for Christ because Jesus, he recognized your effort to do his will. Psalm 84 verse 6 also tells us, well, let me, before I even go to verse 6, let go, let's go to verse 5 and verse 12. Because it says, those who trust in God and want to follow him. If you trust in God and want to follow him, you can be on, in, the, in Mount Zion, you can be in the courts of God. You can be where God is. And Psalm 84 and verse 6 tells us, they turn sorrow into blessing. Those who want their sorrows to be turned into blessings, you can be there too. And finally, in verse 7 of Psalm 84, they, we can grow from day to day in power. If you want to grow in grace, if you want to be more and more like Jesus, then go, go to Mount Zion. God is there waiting for you. Amen. 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 So, Elder Curtis, you'll read for us now Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. I want someone out there to know that I love the book of Revelation. The, the Bible tells us that the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus. Somebody needs to hear this. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 3. And it says there, reading from the King James Version, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. So question is, what hope reflected in the earthly sanctuary is revealed here to us? This question is a beautiful question. The hope of being with our maker. I want somebody to know that the day is coming when our pilgrimage will cease. For we shall see his face. We shall be with him. As a matter of fact, you think you you want to be with God? You should see how much God wants to be with you. Amen. He will be with us. And finally, 
our joys will be realized because our Father, our Maker, we will be, we will have the opportunity of being in His very presence. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And just to add to that. Exodus 25, 8, kind of put it into perspective. It says that, and let them make me a what? A sanctuary that I may do what? Dwell among them. Virgin and friends, God desire, and we see it in the Old Testament. His visible presence was demonstrated in the Shekinah glory, right in that tent, that tabernacle that he had built that he had them built. So we see in the Old Testament that the hope is that God wants to spend time with and among his people. In the New Testament, we see the presence of God was made plain in the personal appearance of Jesus in, as a member of the, the human family. You can imagine God wrapped divinity in humanity so that he could spend time with his people, walking with them, eating with them, living with them, teaching them. Because what? It is looking for a time that is to come, that God is going to make all things new. And as a result of making all things new, he now will be dwelling personally with us. And that is the beauty of it, you know. We will be keeping company with God. And I don't think we understand that, you know. I don't think we can wrap our mind around that, you know, that the one who spake and it was done, the one who commanded and it stood fast. He wants to pitch his tent. He wants to tabernacle with us. He wants to make his home with us. Not just for now, but right through the ceaseless ages of eternity. I want to tell somebody that there should be a hope burning inside of you. It doesn't matter how hard life gets, no. It doesn't matter how you are beaten and battered by the evil one. Just remember this. Always keep this in mind. God loves you and his ultimate desire and he's working towards it is that you will be free from this and spend the ceaseless ages of eternity. And if you don't believe me, take a walk down to the sanctuary and you will get a glimpse of what we are talking about. Amen. Amen. Elder Paul says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. So how do we now even begin to imagine what this experience will be like? This time you'll go first and look at it. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. You know, Elder, I tell you, we can only imagine now. And as you have said in that text that Paul penned, eyes have not seen. It is actually, Paul is quoting from, from Old Testament. We can only imagine it. And the reality is we need to, we need to, each one of us need to envision what heaven will be like and not only envision what, what heaven will be like, but we need to see ourselves there. We need to start seeing ourselves there and make preparation to be there because I was watching a program even today and we must understand that our characters will not be changed when Jesus returns. Our characters would have to be be transformed from here so that when we get there we'll be living we'll be continuing our lives with jesus our flesh yes we are going to put on new immortal bodies but we will be like him the bible says when he comes and so we must understand that we need to from now begin to experience what it is like to live in the presence of god we should be worshiping god we should be putting away sin so that right now as we live on this earth we should start experiencing what it ought to be like to be with the lord and so we should experience it imagine it if you may it might not you might not even come close to it as paul says but still still allow your mind to stretch there because christ is coming again it's real the thing is you know when we start to imagine this i think it will bring about a change in us if we start to imagine being in the presence of god dwelling in the presence of god i believe that we need to start to practice now as it says you know, as you said Ella, eyes have not seen nor ears heard nor has it entered into the hearts of men the things that god has gone to prepare for them that love him and therefore this longing that we have to be with jesus it must be demonstrated in the way how we approach the house of god the way how we worship in the house of God, in that we must be reverent and respectful. We must we must give our all 
when we come to worship. When we are singing, we must sing to the glory of God. When we are praying, our hearts must be lifted up to the glory of God. And as to what that experience will be like as Ella Curtis was singing, what will it be like as the song says, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or will I, on my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? The only thing we can do is imagine. But, bre but brethren and friends, as we go through this morning and the remaining portion of the day, let us try to lift our minds as to what it will be like. And if we can lift our minds to there, I believe, that it will bring a change and a transformation and it will bring a joy as we go through the day. Because guess what? That day, oh my word, what a day that will be when my Jesus I will see, when he takes me by the hand and lead me to the promised land. What a day that will be. And right now, I'm imagining it because guess what? The more I imagine it, the more I dwell upon it, the more I want to be there and i know if you do is the same thing for you well elder curtis i'm gonna hold on doesn't matter how tough it gets because the songwriter says it will be worth it all when we see jesus life trials will seem so small when we see christ one glimpse of his dear face all sorrows will erase Amen. so bravely bravely run the race till we see Christ. Amen. Now, we had a great study this morning. And so I'm going to ask you elders, what do we take away? What is your takeaway from today's lesson? Elder Curtis, you'll go first. As this morning's focus, a day in your court is better than a thousand. We need to cherish every moment that we have in the presence of the Lord. This this idea of who we are meeting, what is all about, what we hope to gain from being in the presence of the Lord. It is better than anything we can ever hope to achieve. It, to be in the presence of the Lord is better than, as a matter of fact, I think this lesson, this day in your courts is speaking to the Sabbath. <laughs> the Sabbath. Every Sabbath is better than every other day. And so I want someone to just rest in the arms of Jesus, knowing that he cares. And in the end, we will be with him face to face. Amen. Amen. Like David says, personally, I, I pray that God will look upon me with divine favor. I personally run away from God, away from his sanctuary. And from my personal experience, there has always been a longing in my heart to find rest in Jesus, to find rest with the people of Jesus. And like David, I have come to the realization that I would rather spend a single day in the courts of the Lord, in his sanctuary, with God and his people, than a thousand elsewhere, anywhere else. Like David, right now, I feel like an exile on this earth. But being an exile on this earth, I want my heart to take delight in participating in worshiping God. And, and I just want to encourage someone today. I want to encourage someone today who may, even by listening this, this morning, in your mind, you want to stray from the house of God. You might not be finding joy there and so forth. And therefore, you are thinking of leaving. But I just want to to ask you, hold on a little longer. The next time you go to the sanctuary, go with a different attitude. Go to give God praise than to get something from God. Go there and look back at what God has done for you and give your all in worship. When they are praising God in song, sing. When they are praying, pray in your heart. Because like David, I would rather be a servant in the sanctuary than to enjoy the honor out there of wicked men and be separated from God and his sanctuary and his people. So I'm encouraging somebody today, let us remember that a day in your courts, O oh God, is better than a thousand elsewhere. May we purpose in our hearts today that we will do honor to the house of God as it deserves, because it is truly the house of God. And let us all practice here so that it will remain perfect when Jesus comes to spend the ceaseless ages of eternity with him. Amen. Well, what a study we had this morning. We want to thank Elder David Goodlett and Elder Mark Curtis 
for sharing with us so passionately about longing to be in the house of God. So we're happy. We want to thank you for studying with us this morning and may God bless you as we go through the rest of the week.